Hello and welcome to the Null Channel. Today we're learning more about Rust traits. I know last time we learned just a little bit about traits, these con contracts that we have, and today we're going to learn more about traits um, and a little bit less about generics as we just go over how to make one and some of the nuances about it. Let's take the code that we started with last week, that we ended with, and we have our, our format display for our old point and our point that was a generic type of point. And let's start writing some code here. All right, so one of the most easy and classical things we can do is give the trait, uh, make the trait of area. So let's do that right now. We can just do trait area. Um, and really, this is just going to have a function uh, area. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's change this to an I32. All right, pretty simple, pretty cool, nice. Now, what this is, is if we wanted to implement this on something, uh, we'll have to do it like we did this uh, FMT display. So let's go ahead and make another struct and implement this on it. So how do we make a struct? Let's make a struct square. A struct. So we just made a struct square, really simple, not, uh, nothing complicated here. We just have the width of the square and um, now let's implement this uh, this contract for it. So we'll do impl area uh, for square. And if we go ahead and save here, Visual Studio Code is going to tell you that there's a problem and that not all trait items implemented missing an area. So let's go ahead and implement it. Fn Fn area, and uh, here it just will be width self dot width times self dot width. So remember, we're we're not putting a return statement here because we didn't put a semicolon here. So this is the last statement of the function, which means that's what it's going to get returned. All right, cool. So we have now implemented area for square. So square now implements this. And we could go make something else like a rectangle. And then we could implement area for rectangle as well. So let's do that right now. And this is just almost as easy of a equation. Now we could go on and we could do triangle or anything like that. Really, that, that's not the point. This is just showing you how to make a trait, how to implement it. And now we could make a function that takes a, a, a generic type and constrain it to anything that implements area. So let's do that really quickly. We're just going to do this real quick and easy. We're going to do fn and then get area. And as we learned, if we want to make this a generic function, we're going to put type t here. Um, remember, t can be any character. t usually t stands for type. Um, so yeah, anyways. And then we're going to say x of type t. Um, and we're going to return an i32. And we're going to do return, uh, we're going to just return x dot area. Oh, but x doesn't have this area. How how can we constrain it? We learned this. We learned this last time. We're just going to do where t is of area. So we're saying this this is constrained by our type. And now you can see we have the function area. Obviously, we didn't need to make a function just to call a function on a on a type we already knew about. But I hope you're getting the point. Now we could uh, do this a bunch of different ways, but this is the general gist of types and uh, generics in Rust. Now, while we're at this, I want to kind of show you a way that you could use enums because we're at the part of the class where we're starting to tie everything together. Everything should start to come full circle. And I wanna make sure that we keep coming back to things that we've talked about. All right. So because we've done this, another way we could do this type of area, another way that you uh, you wouldn't think of a whole lot, unless maybe you're a, a very big C++ programmer and you like your union types, we could do this with an enum as well. And I wanted to show you that really quickly. So you could do this with an enum of polygons, just like this. And, and then what we would do just really quickly and easily is something like this. This is a square. This right here would be a rectangle, our height and our width. And then this would be our uh, equilateral triangle, just another type for us to use. 
and it has a height and width as well. If you remember, an equilateral triangle is one where all the sides are equal. All right. I also wanted to show you again that with enums, you know, this is a named tuple, this is an unnamed tuple, and this is just a base unit. I'm going to blow your mind with this. Check this out. You know, we have this trait of area, and I've told you that enums are first class citizens, right? So can our enum inherit this trait? Let's let's give it a try. Let's impl area for polygon. All right, well, we have an error. Let's see what the error is. The error is not all trade items implemented missing area. So it seems like it's working. Now I'm just gonna copy and paste this code in really quickly, but something you could do for this is just a big match statement. Check it out. We're just making a function area where we match on whether it's a square, rectangle, or equilateral triangle. And you can see that we're just using the, the the things that are held inside of those constructs, those that that union struct type to solve the problem. So this is how you solve an equilateral triangle. This is how you solve a rectangle. And this is how you solve a square. So now we have all of these polygons. And for this enum type, we have the type of area. So now this, er this, this enum also works for our get area function because enums are our first class citizen. Don't believe me? Let's give it a shot. All right, so we have this get area function. Let's uh, let's just delete all of last week's. It's still check in in episode seven. And let's create a polygon. Um, let poly equal, and let's make it an equilateral triangle. And we're gonna say the height is five and the width is also five. Okay, pretty simple. Now let's create one of those base types that we were working with up here. So we have a base rectangle. Let's create that. Let rec equal rectangle with the five height of five. All right, looks pretty good. But will they both work in that one function? I mean, one's an enum and one's a struct, right? Right, right? Let's try it. Let area rec, rec equals get area of rec. All right, that worked, that worked. All right, let's see if the enum works now. Let, let uh, area poly equal get area of the polygon. And that worked as well. That's amazing and that's powerful. I hope you I hope that I, I, I hope I explained that in a way where you get it. This right here is an enum, and this is a a struct. And they're both going to this because the only constraint that we have on it is that it implements area and they both implement area. Now I realize this function isn't isn't impressive or anything, but I hope you can see where we're going with that. Now there's a lot more to cover in a lot of these things. And let me just cover a few things that you can do with these things. You can implement a, a default implementation. Now I warn you with default implementations, I don't think default implementations are particularly good. I think a lot of the times if you're finding yourself going to a default implementation, the better thing to do is to actually just go into the macro system. Now macros in Rust are really powerful and we're gonna do a mini lesson on those, a little mini series on macros. There's actually two different types of macros in Rust and they're both really powerful, but they take a little getting into, getting into uh, just a little bit. But if you really need a default implementation for this, you can do it. You can do this and you can do return zero. Now this doesn't seem that useful, but you can make it a little bit more useful if you do something like this. What you could do is you could break area, uh, the trait down just a little bit. And breaking traits down is good as long as you don't go to the extreme. So what we could do is we could do a trait um, height and we could do a trait of width.
So what we can do here is we can say that area is a superset of height and width. So you can do area, is height, uh, and width. Now, what is powerful here is you could say the default implementation for area is self dot height, get height times self dot get width. And so this would work for squares and rectangles, but pretty much nothing else. So this is actually a reason why I say you need to be careful with how you break this up. You'll also notice that this doesn't work for polygons or anything like that, as well as it doesn't work for our enum because now we need a height and a width, but that doesn't even make sense for some of our polygons. So anyways, it's not saying that you have to do this, but this is how you make a a, uh, an enum that is superset of two other ones. That means that anything that implements area also has to implement height and width. And if they implement height and width, you get an area, a default implementation of area for free, whether you want it or not. Little misspelling there, just a little one. All right, so some other things to keep in mind. One of the things that I want to talk about is what you can make uh, implement a trait. So really cool, if we wanted to make a string implement uh, height, we could. It doesn't really make sense, but string is a type that's defined outside of our, um, it, it's part of the standard library. Check this out. Impl area for string. And there you go. It's gonna say that we need to, um, the trait bound string width is not satisfied and that we need to implement area. Now I'm gonna get rid of height and width because I don't wanna implement these on everything. And we're gonna get rid of the default. There we go. Check it out, we're gonna, we're gonna do it. Area and we're gonna make it return 42 because that's the answer. I've been told that's the answer to everything. And so that's what it's going to return. But what I'm proving here is we can implement our trait for anything in the standard library or any other type that we'd like. But, but there's a caveat here, there's a catch. We can also implement, if you look here where we took the FM, uh, FMT display, we implemented somebody else's uh, trait in our struct. But this is the limitation. We cannot implement a trait that is not in our, our our code on a struct that is not in our code. So if the trait's not in our code and the the struct is not in our code, it will not work because you kind of ruin causality. It, don't worry, there there will be a rent in the time space time could continue. It's like dividing by zero. Don't do it. Um, there's a, we can get into why that's a bad idea um, or why it's not allowed. Um, but uh, basically, that's the one limitation of what you can implement for. You, one of the things, either the trait or the struct or enum, have to be in your code. All right, that's it on traits. I hope that you found this educational, entertaining. I hope you learned a little bit about Rust, and I hope I have made this easy to get into Rust, and I hope I'm proving my point that Rust isn't as scary as a lot of people make it out to be. I know that I haven't talked about memory management and I purposely haven't because you know what? We've written a lot of code and we haven't had to manage memory once yet. Maybe we've had to do a clone or two. But don't worry, we're gonna start tackling more of the harder topics very shortly. The next episode in this is going to be talking about cargo and getting other people's code into your code. And we're very close to starting to tackle some much harder problems in this class. I hope you liked it. If you did, please leave a like, please hit that subscribe and leave a comment. Let me know how I can make these better. And I look forward to helping you learn some more Rust in the future.